Why do we ride? To lose ourselves? To define our identity? To enjoy the thrill and the risk? I've ridden this land low And I've seen it change I don't know where I can go But I'll ride this road again I've ridden this land low I rode this land way back when And I knew there'd come a day As it goes as always been As it goes with what remains I rode this land way back when So far from the coast on through the plains On two feet and in cars I've seen desert views from old freight trains I ride this land so far And I ride this land for days And still I hear your words in every vacant place In every town I've come to show my face I ride this land for days I wrote this road and cried out all the stories I could tell When my world had done gone run dry My soul wasn't fit enough to sell Kicking a motocross bike to life means radically different things. But to all of us, it is a sensation that quickens the heart and accelerates the pulse. We ride to live, and we live to ride. I'm gonna ride this land for years. From the magnificent glowing dunes of California, to the sprawling beaches of Australia, to the floodlit supercross tracks of the world, to the fabled Grand Prix circuits of the continents, we ride. Switzerland is renowned for its epic mountains, lakes, chocolate, timepieces, and sheer beauty. Until now. Step forth Arno Tonus, a special athlete linked to a special place. On the motorcycle, the Monster Energy Kawasaki rider embodies many of the finer qualities of his country. As a rider, you always want to get better, and on my side, I've had a lot of injuries. I cannot regret anything, you know. I've done like the best I could, and for sure it could have been better, it could have been worse, but. I'm not done with the Europe, you know, it's in the U.S. it's going to be an experience and everything, but I think uh, one day I want to come back. It's hard to explain the feeling you get when you ride a dirt bike, you know. It seems like in a park you empty because you're not thinking we are in that intensity that you kind of think you're just feeling the, the flow and, and the riding. So you challenge yourself that much that I think it makes you a, a better human because the sport is so challenging. We, we live uh, with our passion and uh, even if it's tough sometimes, you know, the main thing is that it's a fun sport and we, we love what we do.
if, if you really get involved in what, what you want to do, then you'll find a way and, uh, you know, we always get back up and uh, we, we kind of tough guys. <laughs> Honestly, I have no idea how many laps I, I put it in there. You know, it's it seems like uh, like a life out there because it doesn't change so often. You know, I think I can ride it with eyes closed out there. <laughs> It's a long way from the lakes of Geneva to Pro Circuit in Corona, California, but with Tonus's capacity to make a bike move and bend to his will, it's hardly a surprise. Yeah, you know, it was a big choice for me to go out there because it's going to be new for everything, not only on, a, on the Supercross side, but I mean the life and everything that I want to experience, and it's going to be also a big challenge, so it's just a dream come true. On my mind, I, I want to be in front, you know, I want to go there to, to stay on the back and, uh, you know, I will do everything I could. If, if I have to ride every day, then I'm going to do it and I want to be out front for sure. Riding a motorcycle can be the most solitary of all pursuits, with the irony being that it bonds people together. Empathy of the thrill and the sensation of that danger tinge moment is frequently something we all want to share. From record-holding multi-champions to the newest athletes on the block, riding breaks barriers. You know, coming up and riding all the time and having this spot is has really just helped out my whole career and then everybody wants to come ride so you get to ride with like amazing people. It's always good when you get a lot a good group of guys together you feed off each other you see someone else do something you want to try to one-up them and make your whip look better than theirs or just just having fun riding with your friends that's that's what I grew up doing that's why I like riding dirt bikes because I have fun doing it I've always had fun since I was three years old riding dirt bikes so for me to be 32 now and still having just as much fun as I was a little kid it's it's a blast to ride I love it. I got stone killing hate Try to kill the blues, but they just won't. <laughs> It's always a good day when you get to ride with the King with McGrath, you know, so no complaints, man. And, and Potter Spots is definitely one of the, my favorite spots to ride. It's like right, you're riding BMX out here, and it's just super fun. Look at a guy like McGrath who hardly ever rides. He rides a couple times a year and he'll come and hang with us and we ride every single day, you know what I mean? He still has that same old style as when he was the best, you know what I mean? And it's bitching to come out and ride with him and, and just see how good he still rides at, at his age. I'm scared of that ramp. Dude, dude that's not, the hardest dude. one is the last one to commit the ramp, to. Just hit it just like this one. <laughs> Things got some long gears. McGrath, obviously the knack knack is, is always cool to see him uh, see him throw that thing out and, and look over at the camera. It's something, you know, growing up as a kid, you just watch that at Supercross, you're like, damn, that's that's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> Riding 
riding out in the hills and, and ramps and things like that, it teaches you bike skills that you can't learn on the track. I don't get too crazy with the tricks or anything, but uh, yeah, the whip, uh, the whip does it for me. For me, I've always appreciated riding a dirt bike for a living. It, I, I would do, I would ride a dirt bike if I wasn't getting paid to do it just as much. You know what I mean? And you see a, a lot of guys that don't appreciate riding. They don't, they don't even look like they're having fun when they're riding. They're just out there to make money. And when it's like that, it, it ain't fun. The day I stop having fun on a dirt bike is the day I quit. But that day won't ever come for me. I always have fun riding a dirt bike and. I'm going to do it forever. <laughs> no matter the age, no matter the skill, no matter the championships, riding is the common language. The Grindstone Ranch in California was a special place where the sun rose and the sun set with the thoughts of good times on two wheels, a place where the pressures of professionalism were forgotten and a fantastic new journey was initiated. Monster Energy Boot Camp, a band of motocross brothers, young riders of different ages and different backgrounds, Highly competitive racers who are all proven winners, the boot camp allows them an opportunity to get back to why they were attracted to the sport in the first place. Eighty-five thousand acres of freedom, Akatia Wells, located west of the Salton Sea is one of the many playgrounds where the riders of today play at being the stars of tomorrow. Aaron told me that we were gonna go ride at Ocotillo Wells. I mean, the only thing I could think of was how much fun it's gonna be uh, seeing all the films of all the free ride places and all the cool jumps and turns there. It's just gonna be an awesome day. In Ocotillo Wells, that place is like a legendary free ride place, so uh, this should be fun. We've got up Faulkner, some of the East Coast kids. They've never been to the desert before. So, I mean, after watching videos probably all their life for their heroes riding out here to get the chance to come out here and ride and see that history and see that place is awesome, dude. going on. We've got a couple of good spots kind of like this, uh, a bit south of London. I've been hitting up back home. Not nearly as hot out there. It's been hotter than a dog's bollocks out here. My balls have been sweating like a doner kebab. throwing some fat wits and you know just being a dirt bike kid it's all about having fun we're not competing we're just you know hanging out with the kids that do enjoy the same things as I do or everybody does actually riding here so uh, we're just having fun with the sport <laughs> I 
Everybody's told me how great Octio is. A few of my friends have come here, but uh, it actually did live up to it. There was a lot of fun jumps, a lot of sweet corners, uh, some awesome trails, and uh, it, was, it was awesome. It was a great day. Yeah, dude, it was sick. Everyone did a great job. All the guys rode hard, had a great day, and um, I guess we're out on next year. Donji pulled it off. We did it! Woo! You did it! This is the 2010 Motocross of Nations from Lakewood, Colorado. Riding for the United States on bike number two, Trey Kennard. To be a part of Team USA, which is uh, you know, a huge honor. They've, they've had a lot of success here, and to be a part of that is uh, it's a blessing. You really don't know, like, you know, they've had their GPs and we've had our nationals and like everybody thinks they're the fastest. So like it's it's a great opportunity for them to find out. The last two years, America has been quite lucky in saying that they won. And the reason they're so good is they've got so much depth. They've got three very, very, very strong riders. The thing to remember about the Motocross of Nations, it is a team race. And the USA always has sort of an inherent advantage because the size of our country. We always have three guys. This is my birthday, this is Christmas, this is my Super Bowl, this is my World Cup. It's, it's, every, it's all in one thing, man. It's a pretty damn good race. In the autumn of 2010, the 64th annual running of the Motocross of Nations took place in Denver, Colorado. And it was there that Team USA secured their sixth win in a row for a grand total of 21 Motocross of Nations triumphs. It was sick one again, shit. Team Belgium, Fierce competitors and always a threat, placed a fighting second. The U.S. remained the sport's superpower. One year later, French soil was ready to entertain the three fastest motocross racers from 30 different countries. It was here that Team USA were firmly in the crosshairs. Can't win it with just or just off of any one of our performances. That we have to have a, all three of us have to have a, a good weekend and perform well. I just know that we have a big target on our back when we get out there. know it's a it's a team race and we're able to put our egos behind us and, and just go racing as a team the last thing we want to do is lose of course we want to beat them because it's the pinnacle of the sport at the moment and uh, they you know they have won they are the fastest so I don't think it's an American thing I think it's just the fact that they are the best and we want to beat them kind of uh, the US team versus the world because they want nothing more than us to maybe fail. And not not for a bad reason, you know, but everybody's got their own patriotic reasons to do well. Twenty-two victories in counting. 2012 was the hardest test yet, with the wickedly deceptive sand of Lommel and Belgium ready to strike and ready to punish. If you underestimate this place, it'll get you, and uh, it's the same for everybody. We have quite a few races going in a row right now, but uh, the bottom line is we're all coming here to try to do the best we can and prove that we're the best, and uh, whatever happens will happen. Things will be quiet. 
tight after the first two rounds of racing. It's the third round, once they drop that result, where America always comes out. And we've seen it time and time again. But in saying that, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't win a, win a race yet. But uh, if they didn't win the event, that would surprise me. came and the run ended. Great, unbelievable feeling, amazing. Tony Caroli ruled the sand, but the Germans triumphed in front of a spectacular and vibrant crowd. Twelve months on and south to Germany, Barsha and Dungy, now joined by Eli Tomac, would have their chance for revenge. There's so many great racers that have done it and, you know, won it, and it's the biggest of the biggest, you know? Ken Roxon gets the whole shot from Dean Ferris. Sean Simpson, three! When you bring three of the best guys together that want to win, you know, it's just like we, we can do it, you know? It's a, it's a cool feeling. The Americans to lose last year was you know, for them, that was a seven-year streak gone. But two of them have come back to maybe redeem themselves. That, on its own, is is a mouth-watering prospect. It seems like uh, most of the time, USA is kind of expected to win. Of course, they are favorite because it's the team who won the most. Paroli takes the win. Roxon comes home in second. It doesn't matter if we're racing the nations or uh, the GPs. My goal is always to win and to, to win my, my, my two races. The American guys are just brought up that they, sh they should expect to win this event. But to me, there's so many great world riders, uh, Gasell and Caroli. I feel like they're, they're not lucky to win, but they, they should appreciate it more. And to get second is no shame. Look as though they've taken it. Belgium finished on 27 points. USA on 30. 2013 belonged to Belgium at last. However, the USA was starting to get hungry again. And in 2014, Kegums in Latvia brought the show together once more. Any flags, anybody with any flags for whatever country, now's the time to win. Winners of the very first nations back in 1947, Team Great Britain were also in the hunt this time. You know, the fans are just insane. They're slamming paints over the fence, and, and it's just the atmosphere is, is amazing. The fans at the motocross the nations are, are more than anything else, or they just they save up and they just they go all out, and, and they just come to the nations and have one massive blowout, and that's what makes it, you know. The Americans are here, New Zealand's here, Australia's here, Bulgaria's here, you know, just every little corner of the earth comes together and the three best guys on the day get put together into a race. Well, this is it, everybody. It's time now for the races. Last year, it was just mistakes from, from all three of us, really. We're gunning for that, for the first place. You know, we always will be. If we stay on two wheels, I think we'll, we'll get it done. Two times I've done donations, we've been fourth, and uh, don't want that. I want to be uh, on the box. So that's the goal and the plan. So we're just going to write our best, get good starts, work good as a team, and make it happen. We are go! Race one, MXGP MX2 class. It was the French who were making the points. Team USA had to catch up, but nobody could touch double moto winner Gaudier Poland. Poland takes the win. Gate drops for race two. We are away into that all important first turn. Team France lead with Stephen Frossard. Drive off second, Noren, then the Brits. France 23, Belgium, Great Britain tied on 28 in second, and the USA 
fourth on 34. Team Belgium, Kevin Strybos takes the win. Gautier Paulin wins for France and celebrates. Yeah, the French yeah. will be crowned as champions. Yeah, Who is going to be on the podium? Will it be Belgium? Will it be Great Britain? Will it be the USA? French glory, British pain, and American frustration. The nation's story goes on in the ultimate battle of the countries and colors. It is Team France! Gautier Paulin, Dylan Ferrandis, and Stephen Frossard! The consuming desire to compete forces some of the hardest compromises. Dean Wilson arrived in the USA through life-changing moves from Scotland and Canada and landed at Pro Circuit with bags of courage and a heavy throttle hand. Wilson worked at making it work, and his talent brought the 2011 AMA 250cc Pro National title into his grasp. Since then, the road has been bumpy and occasionally brilliant. This is a racer who knows the heights of the highs and the depths of the lows. Black cloud hang around. Let's hope. Hold us down. Yeah, I think it's just funny how people will write you off and they're so clueless, like they have no knowledge, you know. That's part of anything you do, no matter who you are, you know, there's always going to people take stabs at you and, and say bad things, but it's good motivation for me, you know, training and everything to really prove them wrong and I really just want to do it for myself and, and know that I can be a championship guy again. It's one of the best feelings. When the last dollar falls From that money tree It's all right Don't quit on me Being a professional motocrosser really pushes you mentally, you know, there's times where you're kind of contemplating on quitting just because it's like really tough. Everybody thinks it's a lot easier than what it is to do it, you know, pretty much your full life. You can't speak about somebody until you've taken a step in their shoes. And I've never seen anybody else in Dean's shoes. So Dean is Dean is Dean is Dean. And don't try to change Dean. People in the sport are a little bit blind. To me, sometimes a little bit ignorant. You know, because there's no written rule about how someone should be and how someone is going to be to be a champion. What really matters is heart. And I know a lot of people that are serious, but they don't have a lot of heart. I know a lot of people that are serious, but they don't have a lot of talent. I know a lot of people that are serious, but they don't have a lot of will. And Dean has all those things, but he has fun with it. And that is what's going to make somebody at the end of their career look back and go, man, that was a cool ride. It's Why do we start riding motocross? Why do we start racing motocross? Because it's fun. But once you take the fun out of it, then you lose that little bit of that, that spark, a little bit of that edge, a little bit of that creativity.
in this sport, I feel that all riders are tear-offs. Once you get a little dirty, we got a next one. Everybody, be patient. And also, look at the past and look that there's many riders that have injury and that have come back. I mean, come on, guys. People that write Dean off are just, they must not know much about the sport. And you know what people's opinions are, right? started I could see that little bit of hesitation that little bit of fear of I don't want to get hurt I can't get hurt I asked him like why are you so worried about it you know you have no control what's going to happen is going to happen go out there and race as hard as you can and what's supposed to happen will happen done <laughs> shit just happens man and with, without our control you want to make life laugh tell it you have control so give all everything you have to it and usually when you give everything you have to it it happens it's hard to beat somebody that never quits. I believe that you can't live your life in a glass case. As Rhino would say, you just got to live your life, and whatever happens happens, that's uh, part of it. Yeah, I think everybody's got their own story to tell, and mine's definitely been tricky, but I think uh, it, will, it will be okay in the end. There has to be some sort of darkness to see the stars, right? Being injured and, you know, getting back on my feet again and getting the heart again. It's just, it's definitely a struggle. And then all the people that write you off, and I think it's made me stronger just because I really want to prove everybody wrong and, and prove to myself that, you know, I'm one of the top guys. And, and uh, yeah, I think I'll, I'll be a lot stronger in there. The nation of France is responsible for the term motocross. It's also responsible for putting forth a number of the sport's most talented and charismatic riders. Amongst these Gaelic chargers is Gaudier Paulin. As a kid, I was always doing jump everywhere with, with the bicycle. I never had a motorcycle, and, uh, but always looking at motocross. And the passion, be, I don't know, is just in my heart, you know, won the race, that's it. Flowing with the bike with a poetic style, the world championship contender blends athleticism, courage, and aggression to make him one of the sport's truly elite racers. My riding style, it's, it's many people was telling me that it's a lot different. I think it came because of the BMX. First of all, I was just riding like this and, and the style came like normal. I never walked my style. I, I like to let the bike go and I like to be smooth. So yeah, it just came from, from the pleasure I'm having on a bike that, that this ride, riding style is born.
I really love sport, but for sure sometimes, some days it's tough, you know. Yeah, it's not easy every day, but, um, but you have to reach the next step, it's what we need. I just enjoy, enjoy every second I'm riding when, when everything goes good, and the job behind it is to, to make everything go good every day. Riding it to win, and um, I have a goal that I didn't reach yet, and um, and yeah, it's it's why every day I'm I, I'm walking up. People say that motocross is the hardest sport of the world, but pretty much every athlete it's hard. You know, you will always find something hard in every sport. For sure, people speak about Antonio and, and Ryan, both are, are champions, you know. So this is why, and, and it's normal. But uh, let them play together. It's, it's always cool. Part of the HRC team, it's, it's great, you know. I knew these people since a while. It's the people who give me the chance to become pro. And now with the HRC over on top of it, it just makes the, the cherry on the cake. I really handle the bike and really put the wheels exactly where I want. Especially with, with the HRC, we, we are working on all those small points. Many who have been in the saddle know about the dark side, the moments of pain that come so fast and hit so hard. Moto gives the ultimate elation, but can also cost so much. Perhaps those that push the limits more than most of us never know when to quit. I, I like to do a lot of sports, but dirt bike riding was the only thing which really satisfied me, and yeah, that's why I went this direction. The special thing about uh, motocross is that you need to have uh, all kinds of talents. You have to be physically strong, you have to be mentally strong, you cannot have too much fear, you have to be technically good, so there are so many points that you have to work on. For me, uh, motocross was a perfect sport uh, to satisfy myself. The first years of my career, I was many times uh, overtrained and everything because I, I wanted to do too much. I really wanted to be good. I just uh, love motocross, that was the only thing. I'm not scared of hard work, actually I love to work hard. And I also think I had uh, the ingredients to, to be good. Most of all, uh, the passion made me, made me realize that I really wanted to do this and then training and everything I loved also, so <laughs> and I never really thought about anything else than, than this. The last few years I had uh, a lot of crashes and everything and injuries and I never gave up and I always believe in myself and I'm sure that I would have come back to the highest levels. I think at one time or at one point in my career it would all come together and yeah, nice, nice things would happen. I had some good results on the 250 in 2012, I had many podiums, I even had a GP win and uh, I think the last couple of years I really knew what I was doing and uh, yeah, things were coming together.
I, I think it's clear to say that I had no fear on the bike and yeah, I don't know why, but it has been in me like this. When Joel caught the wrong end of a double jump at Majora for the 2014 Grand Prix of Italy, his life changed forever, but his character held fast. This maybe might uh, surprise many people. The biggest problem was not that I could not walk anymore, but uh, the biggest issue for me was that I could not finish my career or uh, achieve what I wanted to achieve. Even now when I see the races, it hurts me that I cannot be a part of it anymore, but then on the other side, uh, I'm strong enough to put myself over it and uh, see that there are many other things that, that can bring happiness also and that many other people aren't as lucky as I am. So uh, for me, the biggest challenge was to accept that I would never uh, ride a motorcycle anymore in a world championship level. When I had my injury, I crashed. Um, I had the first operation in Italy. I, I, speak, I speak to the doctor and I said, how bad is it? Uh, will I ever walk again? Will I have a chance to walk again? I said, I just need to know it. Just tell me and then I can switch that button in my head and then I know what I have to do. He said, normally we don't really say it, but with you it looks actually quite clear that you will never walk anymore because your two vertebras just went straight through uh, your spinal cord. So it's quite easy to say that you will never walk again or even move one toe or something. From that point, one option was uh, to sit there, coming six months, uh, be negative, live a shit life. Or from that moment on, switch the button, be positive, do everything that you can do. I choose obviously for the second way because it seemed easy, that seemed the best way to live my life, to be positive and, and be happy. I've always been like this, uh, I'm really strong in the head, I, I've just been honest with me, with myself and, and walked the straight way to the, to the goal and, and the goal is to be happy. So far it's all good, so I'm happy. Some people call me a hero, but I'm not a hero, I'm just living my own life and trying to be happy. I don't have any regrets. Uh, I've always lived a, a great life. I think uh, I al already lived a life many people can dream of. The thing I'm proud of is that I've always been uh, honest with myself and with the people around me, and that uh, I've always been happy. I've just been hitting the foam pit a bunch with Matto and Ronnie Renner and trying to flip for speed and style. So today is, I don't know if today is the day, but I'm going to try to make it the day. Motocross can lift you up and dump you down. And Oregon born rider Josh Hill carries a heavy story of extremes of riding motorcycles to the boundaries of natural physics. Hill has stood on top of many an AMA Supercross podium, but in 2011, after a crash training for freestyle, there were times when he barely stood at all. Yeah, I decided to, uh, to move out to Newport when uh, I, I'd actually kind of almost given up on racing. I, I didn't think I'd really be able to get back to it. Just It's like such a different environment, going riding out in the desert, and it's you know real hot and windy, and then you just come back, and it's just like peaceful. It's just like hitting reset every day. I feel a lot like I owe a lot to Kerry Hart. He came in and, and hired me when I was in a wheelchair pretty much and just kind of nursed me back to health and, and kept me going and just kind of you know, dangled that carrot in front of me that if, if one day I could get back on the bike, I would, I would have a job. It's kind of a dream scenario. I didn't know if I'd ever get back to this level. I was in the hospital for 20 days and the, the doctors didn't really, in the ER, didn't really give me a whole lot of hope. 
If I was ever walking again, I was lucky. Racing dirt bikes was pretty much out of the question to all those people. You know, riding for RCH was kind of the turning point when I realized, okay, I can do this. She put it in me because I live on my dreams. I give my fantasies wings. One day I'm going to be king. I'm going to make that woman so proud of the sun. I know you heard about change. It's going to come. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to with my hands held high in the air like a champion. sex games and I wanted to do speed and style like I've always just been the kid that grew up watching crusty videos or and just I just loved free riding I love freestyle I dialed it into the foam pit so quick I wanted to go straight to dirt <laughs> I think I was just kind of too, too excited about uh, landing it that first time, and the second time I went to hit it, I just wasn't really focused, and it's kind of brain faded. It just didn't even seem real as it was happening. I mean, I was in pain, but I was more just kind of like scared, like, what's wrong with me? Because like, I couldn't even like feel my leg. Just one of those things that felt like a nightmare, it didn't even really feel real. I regret what happened, but you couldn't have told me no different. I guess, you know, I did it and then I paid the price for it. I'm not gonna lie, there, there was times when it wasn't fun and I, I really didn't even enjoy life at all. If I gave up, I mean, not only was I not gonna be able to ride my dirt bike, but I was just gonna be more of a handicap. Josh first started um, getting therapy here uh, at our facility when he had his bad crash, when he uh, tried to turn into a freestyler there for a while. Broke his femur and his humerus and uh, contracted compartment syndrome, which is uh, pretty serious. Uh, it was pretty bad. It was a grim uh, prognosis for him. You know, we weren't sure if he was even going to race ever again. He's a determined athlete, and uh, he fought through all the odds and uh, did whatever it took to get back on a motorcycle and be competing at a high level again. on my dirt bike and I can put my foot in a, in a brace and throw my boots on and and I'm, I'm me again like that was the only thing that gave me that feeling that I was still the same person probably my earliest memories in life are riding a dirt bike you know motocross was that was that was life I mean that, that was just the only thing that that was the thing I just loved doing Right now, everybody's hungry. Everybody feels like somebody's taking money out of their pocket. I think uh, if, if you love the sport enough and you just you, you do it every day and that's what you live for, there's always gonna be something for you. I think it's an amazing story. Uh, I think it's just a, a testament to Josh's perseverance and his dedication to uh, getting back and riding at a high level again. The old country. It is almost 15 years since Great Britain last hoisted a world champion. Tommy Searle has come close three times in his career and is still pushing. To have the track so close to my home, a friend's place is, yeah, it's amazing to have that place and to have that facility, I'm very lucky. Those are the days that I say it doesn't feel like a job because I can't wait to get on the bike. I'm loving every moment of being on the bike and those are the days where it all clicks and it, and it is just a hobby. Yeah, those are the best days that I can ever, ever wish for, you know, and then living my dream when I am at that track.
Yeah, when it's all going good, you obviously, you do take it a bit for granted. We get paid good money and then you're riding at the track with your friends in the summer and uh, everything's perfect, you know. There's, there's those, you do have those days, a lot of times you need to have a reality check and we are lucky to do what we do. Obviously, people looking in sometimes think we have it a lot easier than what we do because, I've, yeah, you know, everyone riding bikes, that is the dream. The racing in the World Championship and be at the top of the world, but uh, out of all those people that ride bikes, there's only a very select few that, uh, that are there. So walk on. The MX1 class now is, yeah, it's a tough class. The fact of it, you can't be at the front if, you, if you're not 100%. Yeah, the last couple of years I've been carrying an injury and I've been trying to get there. And it seems when I get close, then um, I get another setback. When everything is going right, it does come quite easy. When it's not going right, that's when you really feel it and that's when you have the pressure and the, um, yeah, the, the lows of the sport. Yeah, for me, if I was to finish my career and I, I never won a, a world championship, you know, it's, it's disappointing, but then at the same time, you know, it's difficult. You can't, uh, I wouldn't live the rest of my life in regret because I feel that I've given everything and um, there would be no regrets, whatever the, um, the end result is. If it didn't happen, it didn't happen. Maybe there's a reason it didn't happen. Very difficult to answer that because I've never had a life without motocross. You know, it's been from five years old. I've I've rode a bike and I've never had more than a couple of months where I've never rode a bike. When I'm injured, all I think about is getting back to the bike, and then when I'm on the bike, all I think about every day is riding. It is my it is my life. It's motocross, and I'm very very privileged what motocross has brought to me so far. Every October, the biggest names in global motocross gravitate to the big neon glitter that is Las Vegas, Nevada. With a million in cash up for grabs, the Monster Cup throws down big, with three mains, joker lanes, split starts, and a spectacular track unlike any on planet Earth. Well, I bet you never seen it come back from so low yet yeah, till the spot finally throws your ass out. Then it's on to the next Ryan cause the photo took it on the first year. Who do you like in year number three? Well, year number three, there's an empty spot right here on this Cup of the Monster Energy Cup. Could we add one of those things back on it? 
for it. Separating the top ten and talk about talent in this field, Wes. It's one of the most stacked fields we've ever seen. You've got, I think, 19 championships, uh, three world championships. You name it, they're all in there. It's too bad I messed up the deal. Well, it's a hard life living when you're all like I do. It's a serious race to the top, and there ain't nobody playing by anybody's rules. Yeah, the first one to win is to drop. So it's shuffle the deck and load up the dice. I'm setting. Just off the 10 freeway in Southern California rests the town of Beaumont. Home to 40,000 people, the town is blessed with sunshine, 95 degree temperatures. It is also the site of the finest free riding landscape in the entire nation. Man, Beaumont's one of those places, you've, I've always heard about it as a kid, I've seen it in so many videos, and it's just one of those things, you, every time you come here, you find something cool, you find something new, and man, it's just, you come here, and it's just like having a ball. We get a big rain, and we'll get, uh, get the boys together and come out and ride our dirt bikes, make jumps, you know, it's nothing better, you know, it kind of changes it up, it's just fun, man. A lot of guys have uh, been coming out here for years, and with both hills, this is the first time that I've been out with them and stuff, and they're uh, super competitive. It's always a battle, so it's funny to see.
it's not like a track where you're going out there and like trying to go as fast as you can and race lap times. It's like we come out here and just see who has like the coolest style and we're still competitive. We're still trying to like, you know, one up each other out here. And it's just, it's just fun, but we're just smiling, laughing, talking crap the whole time, having a blast. Oh yeah, I love to do this. I normally don't really get to go out to the hills and I go out to the test tracks and just throw whips and just have, try to have fun on test tracks, but it's like you can only throw so big on like a, you know, a jump with an eight foot landing that's just, you know, kind of weird. So coming out here and just going out huge big hits all over the place, it was so much fun, I dig it. There's so many different styles of jumps and everybody has a different style. Somebody from the group just killed each spot we went to. Scott hit the cliff jump and just went probably 10 feet higher than anyone else off of it. And then JG had a, like quite a few jumps that he was just pitching it backwards off of. And my little brother was, uh, he had a couple of jumps he won on, but he was just kind of kicking my ass all day. So I, just, I had a blast though, man. And just riding with such good people, you just try to up your game and you try to up your style and it's, it's just the best, like you can't beat it. gets the better he gets and like the day already came where he went out and passed me on the track and then today was a day where he kind of just out skilled me and out like out jumped me for the most part today so it's a tough pill to swallow but at least it's my little brother and I get amped like it's me doing it when I watch him do it. I've always looked up to Josh like just from day one just because he's he's my big brother for one and you know I've always respected his talent on the motorcycle and I've made respect for him and you know I, I, it's awesome to learn from him. I think it's awesome to go free riding because like it's hard to use your imagination and find things and come out here, it's like it's all fun, so you don't even realize that you're making yourself better. Just shaving off the fat of your skills and just, you know, just having fun while you're doing it. It's a way of life. Eh? It's a cliche maybe, but that's because it's true. Eh? You get up with it and you go to sleep with it. Eh? You dream about it. It's 20, 24 hours a day. You need to be in love with a motorcycle. My love for my dirt bike was so big that it could easily overcome all the effort I had to put in to be fast on that bike. In no other sport, I could find that same kick the same adrenaline rush. The FIM World Motocross Championship has existed since 1957. Its premise, to determine the fastest, most versatile, and accomplished rider on planet Earth.
For 58 years, the MXGP World Championship has delivered up countless awe-inspiring moments and memories. In the last 10 years, one of the greatest riders to grace MXGP with his skill, versatility, charisma, and popularity is Tony Caroli. Not only is he the undefeated champion of the last six years, he is also one of MXGP's most iconic riders, a true master of motocross. He's an athlete who can conquer any condition or any foe. You go to a GP, they all have the talent, otherwise they wouldn't race uh, GPs. They all have good bikes, they're also fit. So what's gonna make the difference? I think how much you want that win. For me, I believe that's gonna be the deciding factor about winning or losing. His uh, natural speed and his ability to, to ride at a, at a certain speed, at a certain level, and then still being able to push it a little bit more. He really um, manages really well to choose his moments, when to pull the trigger or when to pull that extra bullet. He doesn't have 12 extra bullets. He has maybe one or two. So, but he manages to pull them at the right moment. So that's, that's really where he's, where he's very strong. I think the way he reads the races, his tactics, and he's uh, apart, of course, from his natural speed and from his fitness and stuff. You can't say, uh, Tony's winning because of weak competition. For example, Clement, Gauthier Poulain, with Frossa, with Max, with Bob Richef, with John Simpson. They're not pussies, they are, they're all, also really tough competitors. In 2015, Caroli's domain came under threat. AMA legend Ryan Villapoto, in an effort to close his storied career with a world title, walked away from a fourth Supercross championship to take on the might of the Sicilian and his cosmopolitan group of rivals from across the continent. For me, I'm coming over just trying to, you know, get a job done. Yeah, as for the sport, I think, you know, it definitely made, you know, some waves. It's incredible uh, the exposure that it's given the series, the excitement and buzz that it's created worldwide. It's been phenomenal. There's been a whole shift just overnight. You have two worlds that were kind of separated by, you know, different types of fans. And I think Ryan has started to merge those fans. In America, we're stuck in this bubble. And I think Ryan popped that bubble and it's just fucking on. I give it to Ryan because he's got the ball to lay it out there and, and go after it. He could have sailed away into, into the history books as a, as a great rider without doing this. He was ready to walk away last May. When you're somebody who works as hard as Bill Poto did for 10 years, to have the opportunity to come over here and really you know, take a fortnight or three weeks in between races is probably something he's you know, we've wanted to do for 10 years. When you perform to that highest level, you're only going to get so much squeeze out of that lemon. To now have, uh, uh, you know, Tony Cairoli at sort of the peak of his career going against Ryan at the peak of his career 
it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great battle for the ages. I think that 2015 has everything to be the year of motocross. We have Ryan Villopardo coming from the United States. We have a time world champion, Tony Cavoli, that is there to defend his title. I don't know how many riders can win a moto, how many riders can win a qualifying race, how many riders can win a GP. It's racing, you know, and, and everybody's gonna have good days, everybody's gonna have bad days. Tony, in the whole big picture, has been the guy to obviously beat. As for weekends or, or stringing races together, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of good guys, a lot of quick guys. Yeah, it's not gonna be easy. I think the level uh, of the current riders is really they've really raised the bar each time that we have a motocross of nations, it's clear that uh, you know the European level is uh, every bit as good as what, what is in America now. The winner, Ryan Villapoto, Kawasaki. The pressure and the focus was much more on Ryan and on Tony but that allows all the other guys to, um, yeah, to just be a little bit more relaxed and, 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 and lift up their game. The fact that Ryan is here is gonna, is gonna make it more exciting. I don't expect it to be a, to be a two-man game. You have to be careful with the, the Caroli versus Villapoto thing because everyone's watching so much of those two guys, and I've been saying this all along. For your Clement Dassault or Max Nagel or Gautier Paulin, th there's no pressure. I always put pressure on myself. You know, these people are you know, expecting me to do well, you know, and, you know, they have a lot of, a lot invested in this whole thing, so, yeah, you have a little, you definitely have added pressure. Does Ryan feel pressure? Yeah, he does. Of course he does. Pressure? Here. Carly, he's got a certain mental uh, strength that a lot of his competition don't necessarily have to that certain extent he's able to do it, you know, week in, week out, in different conditions, you know, and that's what the, the World Championship provides. It offers in Europe, you know, you go from one week in and, and bottomless sand and, and then you're like racing on a road racing track at the next. Ryan's motivation is winning. It's not the fame, it's not the fortune. It's if Ryan wants to, to set his mind to something, he wants to be a champion, that's what he's gonna do, and, and I don't think it's any different here. Oh, if there's one thing that I can put my finger on that would suggest he could do it here in Europe is he's so tenacious. When his back's against the wall, that seems to be when he, per he performs the best usually. I just hope they all stay healthy and, and keep the championship close and dramatic. And I wouldn't be surprised if one of those other guys won either. was one of the tougher tracks and everybody had said it was going to be a, a pretty tough weekend. You know, I was pretty pleased with it until I, uh, you know, crashed. It's a bummer for the team that we're out. It's one of those deals, it's racing, you know, like what are you going to do? In terms of the World Championship and the way that the Ustream have grown it into the series that it is, uh, I think they're you know, doing a great job in my opinion. Just the, you know, the television and, and the way it's exposed worldwide now uh, can only benefit all involved, to be honest.
lucky me, I got three chicks. 